we decided to start our teaching lessons on rhinoplasty, bifaloplasty, facelifting, facial plastic surgery for the sake of God and sake of science in order to teach and improve the standard of practice of rhinoplasty, facial plastic surgery among our junior colleagues. So now the first lesson today, we start about hump reduction. It's a very important subject because many patients really undergo an over hump reduction. And this is very important now lesson today to, to differentiate between actual hump and false hump, minor hump, moderate hump, and large obvious hump. Let's start with the first case, which is now a, a very mild hump as you see. An excision of this hump will definitely cause deformity. Because, I mean, there is no, once you excise this hump, there will be, remember, there will be a hidden process. And you most likely with this very small hump there, which you see there, a very small hump, it's very difficult to excise very small amount. Therefore, the best answer for this hump is the push down. Bush 9 does not work in, on, in all cases, only a very mild, small hump similar to this. Also, when you do the bush down, never excise any bone from the, the uh, bony side towards. I mean, don't excise any bone from there, don't remove any wedge from this area as some surgeons do. This might end with, with really disaster. For such a small hump, the answer is to do the intermediate osteotomy and the lateral osteotomy. So once you have done the intermediate osteotomy and the lateral osteotomy, then on both sides with your finger, mild gentle pressure will, will solve out and give you very nice straight dorsum as you see here. You can go to my YouTube videos and watch my bush down technique. So bush down only indicated in very small humps like this. Moderate hump, larger hump does not work. You have to do revision again if you do push down technique because you cannot push push down. You cannot sh change the shape of the bone because always with, with moderate larger hump, the bone is, is convex. The hump is has convex surface, so you cannot with push down you cannot change the shape. Okay, we go now to the next next case, which is really an obvious obvious hump, and and also as well a a droopy tip. So when you look at this patient, you get, get you be you get a misleading misleading picture that the patient has got a very high, large hump. Actually, the hump is not very large. The hump was caused mainly by the droopy tip. This is something called we call it's not really false hump. It's half false hump. So if you from the beginning of the procedure, procedure excise excise this hump like this. This will be an over excision of the hump, over excision of the hump. So once you do your tip blasty at the end, you will find yourself you have over excised the hump, and then you have to go to consider an augmentation of procedure. And maybe it's difficult to find enough cartilage because you almost use the septal graft for the tip blasty. And then you have to go to the ear. Ear also cartilage is not suitable for, for this area. And you may not have the homograph may be not available in your in your in your in your in your clinic, so you could you be in trouble to replace the already lost bone. Some people get the back, the hump, they crush it and put it back again. So in, in order to avoid this, always remove half what you think. Always half what you think. You start the procedure, remove half what you think. After that, by the end of your surgery, once you have done your tip blasty and achieve adequate tip. Uh, projection, tip elevation, tip rotation, then you can assess the hump again. If you need to remove more, you can either use the rasp, rasping, uh, gentle rasping, smooth rasping, fine rasping, and also trim slightly the cartilage. You should always preserve, you should always preserve the small cartilaginous, small cartilaginous, cartilaginous dorsum there. So when you start removing the hump, you reserve at least about half centimeter of the cartilaginous dorsum there, and then we go and, and, and we scissor, uh, excise the, uh, inside the uh, abrator cartilage, and then with, with the osteotome, 14 or 16 millimeter, you remove the hump. So always remove half what you think. That's the message. Great message, remove half what you think, 
after after you 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 do your tip last year assess again if you need to remove more in most cases 80 percent of the cases that will be the end uh, adequate nice tip last year will achieve your goals and there's make you no need to remove any any further hump the last last difficult situation when you have deviated nose with hump like this for example you see deviated nose with 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 hump so always there is one nasal bone is longer than the other. One nasal bone is longer than the other. So there's two important things to consider. First of all, when you move your hand, don't make your chisel, your osteotome parallel to the face. It has to be oblique away from the affected side. So it has to be away, uh, oblique towards the deviated side, toward, oblique slightly towards the deviated side in order to preserve more bone on this side, uh, to preserve more bone on this side. So you have to be, to be always, for example, I mean, the affected side on the left now, so the osteotome has to be oblique slightly towards the right side, so because we need, we need to preserve more bone on this side, because in this side, you see the bone is shorter than this side. So if you go to your, your, your osteotome parallel, you will be in again with, with short and long bone. So after osteotomy, it will have the persistent deviated nose. So therefore, very important that you put your osteotome parallel uh, slightly away from the affected side, I mean, uh, going toward the, the non-deviated side. So this will reserve more bone on the affected side, will reserve more bone in this side, and it will take a little bit of more bone from this side. So you end most likely with, with equal, equal knees and bones. The other things to remember always remove, remove really, you should remove half in, in this deviated noses. You should always remove, again, very little of the hum, half or even less than half. Because remember, in, in deviated noses, you may have to do mid-lateral and lateral osteotomies. So you may get some collapse by the end of surgery, collapse of the nasal bone. Because you have already removed the hump, you have done osteolateral and midlateral osteotomy in order to, to treat the concave, concave and the convex nasal bone. So we have always a concave and convex nasal bone there. One is, in this case, the left side is, is convex and the right side is, is, is concave. So we need to do two midlateral osteotomy there in order to break this convexity and this concavity of the nasal bone. So therefore, once you have done midlateral and lateral osteotomy plus hand removal and you correct the nasal septum also, septum blast, definitely after osteotomy, you will have some mild collapse of the nasal bone. Therefore, many, in many cases, I consider hand removal at the end of surgery, not at the beginning of surgery in, 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 in quick noses. So very important, always try to consider hand removal at the end of surgery in quick noses or remove only, only about 20 or 30 percent of the hump in large obvious hump in quick nose at the beginning. And if the hump is moderate or small, never, never remove this hump in, 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 in quick noses. Leave it to the end, even don't remove it, even with a little bit of small hump there. A patient will be not worried much, will give very more natural look. Patient mainly con concerned about the straight and symmetrical nose. I hope I have in, uh, really covered all the aspects of hump removal and covered the important point and the tricks which you should learn and avoid it during, during your, your, your surgery. This is Bashar Bizra from our rhinoblasty Bizra Academy in London and Dubai and the London Academy of Facial Plastic Surgery. Thank you for watching how I've been useful to you today. Thank you.